Hello, everybody, and welcome to our interview series at Maritime Innovations. Today, I'm in Singapore and uh, with a great guest from Pelagos uh, 3D, a company that is reshaping how our industry thinks about spare parts and supply chains. With me is Hakan Elkier. He is a CEO of Pelagos 3D, who has been at the center of bringing digital manufacturing into real operations for thousands of vessels. If you ever wondered what on demand parts, digital inventories, or distributed manufacturing actually mean in practice, this is going to be a fascinating conversation. Hakan, thank you so much for taking some time today. Um, I'm excited, I have to say, to dive into how Pelago 3D is changing the way shipping approaches, spare parts, reliability, and resilience. Let's start with the bigger picture. When you look at the maritime industry right now, where do you see additive manufacturing making the biggest difference? From our perspective, Pelagos was created because of a need in the market. Um, that need is, is availability for spare parts. Today, a lot of maritime vessels and, and, and offshore energy assets are under big operational risk because they cannot get their spare parts in time. Using additive manufacturing and other on-demand manufacturing technologies allows them to get parts produced quickly and closer to the point of need. That's really interesting because it leads directly to the question of real impact. So let me ask, could you share a few real examples where Pelagos 3D has made a clear impact for a vessel or an operator? Yeah, so Pelagos, we deliver parts uh, to our customers, which are the equipment manufacturers uh, serving and uh, the assets I mentioned um, every week. Um, these are can be parts like, for example, a returnal standpipe uh, from Kawasaki Heavy Industries, one of our customers, where uh, the lead time was 135 days, which then we're able to reduce down to 15 days, uh, ensuring that the car carrier, in this case, didn't get any operational issues by waiting for the part for a long time. Thanks for sharing these examples. It really helps to understand the practical side. Another topic that often comes uh, up in the industry is reliability, especially uh, when it comes to qualification. How do you approach OEM qualification and ensuring reliability, which many people still see as a challenge in additive manufacturing? Yeah. So we are the partner to the OEM, the original equipment manufacturer, the IP owner, um, who are then serving the end user. So when we work with OEMs, we need to understand what are the production requirements, uh, the post-processing requirements, potential heat treatment, testing, inspection, certification uh, requirements. So we make sure that we follow all those requirements set towards us. If the part requires 3-1 certificate from the classification society, we will certify the part uh, accordingly. We as a company are of course ISO certified um, by DNV with the new technology qualification from ABS. Uh, so we don't take any shortcuts um, on this area. Mm -hmm. That's a great explanation, yeah. And connected to this, there's another concern I hear quite often from OEMs, especially when digital parts uh, files are involved. How do you ensure that OEM design and digital part files remain protected and cannot be misused or copied when they are produced across different manufacturing locations? Yeah, so we have, first of all, strong legal agreements and frameworks in place, both with um, the OEMs, our customers that we are serving, but also our manufacturing partners. Uh, at the same time, our Pelagos platform that facilitates uh, the global network across 100 sites around the world uh, has a very strong cybersecurity uh, framework, uh, undergoing regular pen testing uh, to make sure that any vulnerabilities are uh, catched before uh, it is released uh, to the market. Um, also, to further safeguard the OEM, our manufacturing partners don't know the name of the OEM, they don't know the part number, they don't know the application. So do all these measures in addition to many more measures to ensure that we are safeguarding uh, the intellectual property um, to the OEM. Thank you. I mean, that gives a very clear picture of how you handle trust and security. Mm -hmm. And it ties into something many fleet managers are thinking about right now, especially with global supply chain uncertainty. Do you see their um, on-demand manufacturing becoming more of a standard solution rather than a niche given the current supply chain landscape? Our focus is very much on the legacy portfolio. If you look at the technology as such, it's, it's, it's still a great technology for low volume manufacturing. If you talk about high volume manufacturing, conventional manufacturing methods still, still apply. Uh, what's interesting with the legacy portfolio, typically assets about 15, 20 years of age, is that often the 
OEMs are ramping down production and lead times are increasing. And that's where the biggest pain in the market is. So definitely when it comes to legacy portfolio perspective, more and more parts should be offered through digital and entry. And, and in the oil and gas industry or the energy industry, what's, what's normally happening there is that these oil and gas operators are building very big physical inventories of parts because the cost of downtime is very, very high. And of course, many of these oil and gas operators are keen on reducing that physical inventory, both from a sustainability perspective, but also from a cost perspective. So a lot of benefits uh, associated uh, to this. Makes sense, uh, especially as the whole spare part ecosystem is changing now. And it brings me to your digital marketplace. Your marketplace model is quite unique. How do you imagine it evolving over the next few years as the ecosystem grows? So from our perspective, we are serving the OEM. So the digital inventory that we have is towards that OEM with their parts listed. Um, so in that case, it's, it's a great way for them to, if they have a customer in Brazil or they have a customer in Australia or Japan, they can use our Pelagus platform to then order parts where they're needed, uh, which provides a lot of resilience in the supply chain um, and, and allows the OEM much more flexibility in terms of where uh, and also when the parts are produced. I see. Uh, I mean, that, that's exciting to hear, especially as your platform continues to grow. Another angle I find very important is talent and education, of course. You work with educational institutions in Singapore. How important is the talent and training aspect for Pelagus 3D? So it's a reason why Pelagus is headquartered here in Singapore. And we have offices in several locations around the world, but our headquarters here. And that's because the Singapore government was very forward-leaning in terms of taking a strong position within advanced engineering and advanced manufacturing, setting up a, a global fund uh, managed by, by NAMIC National Additive Manufacturing Innovation Cluster. That means incentivizing companies to come here, um, but also ensuring that the engineers of tomorrow is, is being educated here as well. So in terms of the talent pool, uh, when it comes to advanced engineering, it's fantastic, uh, which gives us strong access uh, to talent from the local universities here, NUS, NTU, to mention a few. Uh, we're also in close collaboration with the universities in terms of um, providing uh, uh, presentations on the future of digital supply chain, um, how their skills uh, are important for companies like, uh, like ourselves. Thank you. That gives a very clear picture of where Pelagus 3D is heading. Okay. Thank you so much for welcoming me here today in your headquarter in Singapore. And I really enjoyed our conversation and appreciate the time you took to share your insights. Thank you for your time today. Thank you so much for coming.